So where's the economy going to be five to 10 years from now? Because on one side, you've got technical businesses like ours, and we find people working at home are more productive than ever before. Yeah. And certain restaurants are moving out of the city where they pay a percentage of receipts uh, as rent into the suburbs, and they're delivering their food in and doing very well for themselves with less employees and, and better profits. But on the other side, I mean, what, 25% of the people are unemployed and the government, I mean, forget about protecting individual rights. We're violating, the government is violating rights at a rate that we've never seen before in America. Yep. Where are we going to be five to 10 years out? So, I, I mean, I think, I think that we're going to be very bifurcated. I think, I think that, that this whole discussion of inequality, which I always say, you know, is, is, is irrelevant and not important, but there's a sense in which it's irrelevant in the sense that the government creates it. The government explicitly creates it. And the government is creating a, a more and more bifurcated uh, world in which we live. The, the technology world has a certain momentum to it, and it is still relatively lightly regulated. And, uh, but even there, um, we're gonna see more regulation of tech. Certainly the big tech companies are gonna be more regulated. Um, if, uh, if, uh, if this administration and the next administration, whoever continues to restrict immigration, then you're going to see uh, fewer, less and less talent coming to the United States. And, and we know how much of Silicon Valley and the technology business is immigrants and, and the best from all over the world. If capital continues to be misallocated, then at some point there's going to be real shortages uh, of capital going to the best ideas. Um, and there'll be less entrepreneurship. I mean, I think even today, I mean, when I talk to venture capitalists over the last 10 years, they, they would say, it's not like it used to be. It's less dynamic, it's less innovative, and it's, it's just, and, and there's, just, there's just not the same spirit that they used to be. And some of that is from the capital side, and some of that's from the kids coming in, and some of it is from, from just the, just the, 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 the you know, the fact that there's more regulation now, even in Silicon Valley. So my view is five, 10 years from now, certainly there'll be some businesses that are still making good money. There'll be new innovations. We'll have iPhone version, what are we now, 12, 22. Uh, Apple will still probably be a very successful company. Um, who knows, Facebook, Twitter, I, 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 I'm not gonna make projections like that, but there will be new innovations in technology. Some people will have made a lot of money. Some people, will, their productivity will be increasing dramatically. We'll have more robots. We'll have more AI that, that facilitates increased productivity in certain sectors in certain areas. And indeed, that's what's saving us. I think, I think what is saving the United States right now, what's saving the world right now, is that we're at this interesting inter intersection where technology is, has the potential now to dramatically boost productivity through robotics and through AI, at the same time as government is destroying other forms of increased productivity. So that's going to be the battle. Is, are the destruction forces greater than the productive forces? And it's hard to be optimistic, So, I, I, but I don't see a collapse. And I, the reason I don't see a collapse is because I think those productive forces are so strong that it's hard to destroy them. It's hard to really knock them out for a loop so that they, they don't have an impact. But, it, but some restaurants are moving to the suburbs and they're gonna do fine. A lot of restaurants are never gonna open and never gonna find a place for themselves. Uh, I was just reading an article about New York. All the cultural institutions in New York are shut down. What is gonna happen to all the actors, musicians, singers, comedians, who used to make a living. And who knows if they'll ever be able to make a living again doing what they used to do, right? So what happens to our cultural institutions, which are a real value to us? And, and one of the reasons we love cities, particularly if everybody leaves the cities, can those resurrect themselves elsewhere? Is there, because they require economies of scale, so they require a certain mass of people. They cannot be phenomena just of the suburbs. Will we get them more online? Is there a way to monetize that? You know, who knows? I, I think we're going to be, in 10 years, we're going to be in some ways poorer, in some ways richer. Technologically, I think we'll be richer. Um, overall, flat. And I think the, the, the poor, the old, the less educated, the, um, the, 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 
uh, are gonna are gonna disproportionately suffer uh, from the next ten years, just like I think they did over the last ten years. I think that everything that happens right now is disproportionately hurting the poor or the, the, the less productive, the less educated, um, the less able to pack up and move to wherever the jobs are, less able to pack up and move to, um, uh, you know, to, uh, to the suburbs. Um, and, and, and the people who are pacified, whose motivation is destroyed by the welfare state, you know, government is saying, oh, the stimulus pack, the stimulus check is going to arrive any month now. So don't leave because you don't look for a job because you're going to get money for free. Those are the people who hurt the most. Um, so, I, I, you know, I, the people who are doing well right now will continue to do well. I suspect. So people can work from home. Tech people, um, lawyers, accountants are going to do fine. The other good one is maybe we'll see more privatization of education as people seek out schools for their kids. Yeah, I mean that, you know, if there's a backlash against, and if there's a disruption of institutions that just assume the government runs, that'll be the most positive thing that could happen out of all of this. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at youronbrookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.